Hi everyone, it's Kat here. How are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about Denison labels. I am going to hopefully inspire you on ways that you can use your Denison labels and in some ways a little bit different to what we've seen going around at the moment. I love Denison labels. We use them to decorate on our tags. We use them in our journal. So I'm hoping, as I say, to give you some ideas on slightly different ways that you can use them. I've been hugely inspired by Jessica Rapp and I've seen that Rachel from Roxy Creations has done a video and also Gail Agnestelli and Tracy Fox have also done um, videos. So hugely inspired and I hopped onto um, Signet Stamps Etsy shop and I purchased some of these myself. Now Bob did reach out to me because I'm an Aussie girl and he is keen to also get more of us um, girls to purchase his stamps. So I agreed that I would do a video as well. So let's hop into it and we'll get started. But before we do quickly, just one more thing. If you do decide to invest in a set of these stamps, then he does recommend that you actually cut around the labels to get them out because there have been very very rare reports that they have you know and I think what it is is because when people get the stamps they pull them and they they tear they shouldn't but very very rare occasions they have he does send out instructions with the stamps when you purchase them um, so that's what I'm going to do right now I'm going to cut around all of these stamps and I'm going to come back and we're going to start Show you guys uh, because um, I just thought it'd be handy if you had a bit of a demonstration but you can see here that when you take the acetate backing off they're quite sticky and if you just cut really carefully they kind of are perforated and you just follow that around. all right so here we are all cut out and they stick onto the back of the acetate and we're ready to have a bit of a play so i have got some archival ink here the colors i'm going to be playing around with are plum and coffee watering can sienna and i've got fern green and olive green so i'm going to see how they go and also i do have cobalt I've got jet black and I've also got aqu aquamarine so we thought we would have a play okay so number one idea stamp on your scrap paper so I'm going to go with the bigger the bigger stamp here so you can see this is actually my first time of using these stamps so I'm going to go with, um, let's go with, you know what, let's go with Sienna. Okay, so we can stamp. Press down for about five seconds, I think, just to give it a really good imprint. Oh, they're lovely. They are very nice, actually. Okay, we'll go one more. Okay, we'll keep stamping away. So we can cut these out and we can decorate a page. You can put some photos down, you can put your quotes, you'll do a little bit of collage work. And then if we cut one of these out. So we've cut them out and this is what my idea is, is that you can use these just to, you know, jot some little notes down. Or another idea is if in your planner, like when you've got a page like this where you've got lots of notes and then you've remembered there's something else you'd like to do, you might want to just stick, stick something down like this and then it will stand out. And when you turn to the page, it just sort of highlights it and then, oh yeah, that's right, I wanted to organise that. So this is what I ended up with just stamping away on a few scraps. That was the Sienna. This was on some ledger paper that was just a scrap that was just sitting around that I would never have used. So this is a olive green. So there's a couple examples there. This is on, you know, the dotted thirds, I think it is, or, you know, the larger spaced um, children's writing paper. Coffee stained, a scrap that I've got, and I've just used that with co cobalt ink. That one there is coffee, again on the same paper. Some more of that ledger paper. That's the Sienna, and that's just the ones on the coffee dyed paper. So idea number two is to stamp on old magazine papers. So I've got this old catalogue magazine, 
Needlework and Crafts. It's 1968 to 1969. Picked it up in a like a vintage antique sort of shop quite a long time ago. So what I've done is I've I've grabbed three pages here. So let's have a look at our stamps. I'm just wondering. Well, really, it's down to finding something on the page and deciding what you want to go for. So this one here is always fun. So I'm going to use Plum. And I'm going to go with the same stamp again. And I'm going to try and grab that Gifts and Things. Now what I found as well is that when you stamp, you pretty much take all the ink off the stamp and then if you want to switch over to another colour, it's almost like it's a fresh um, palette again and it doesn't pick up the colour that you were previously stamping with. So I'm just going to have to get really close here guys so I can see and that's the beauty of having these clear stamps like this. So there you go, that's the finished product there. So other areas we could go for is um, now I like I like that. I'd like to try and grab that. So let's go in with the black. Stamp a few times just to really get the ink onto the stamp. So I'll just bring this down so I can have a good look at where I'm stamping. That's the beauty of these clear stamps is that you can try and line everything up. I probably even recommend rubbing around the border just to make sure you get an even stamping. There we go. I think that's going to look really good. I'm going to cut that one out so you can have a look. So there you go. That's that's that one there. I think that's a lot of fun. Now it's just gone a little bit. So I'll just tidy up that snipping there. Um, now you can just get a black little text marker there and just where it's... Let's do that right now. There we go. So I think that one turned out really well. Okay, so I had a little bit of a play and on the three pages that I had, I mean, I've still got heaps left over, but I thought this was enough. So I used some of the various sized stamps. This one here, I just grabbed a little bit of script that was at the bottom of the magazine page. I thought that would be super cute. And then some of the... Um, smaller stamps that's what I ended up doing I just grabbed some of the uh, prices this one here I just grabbed because I thought that would be a nice gray background you could use so some more sale signs dollar signs and this is a little flower I thought that would be quite cute this one here, I just grabbed that little sewing machine. It's a cute little shoe there. Now this one here was just a bit of scrapbook paper that I just had lying around, but I, I liked that, so I stamped that one. This one here is just off a music like pamphlet, and that was the cover, the cardboard cover. And I've always kept it, so I ended up stamping that out. I'm very happy with how that turned out. And this is some more of the larger stamp. This one here, um, I liked the hands on that, so I grabbed that. This one here, this was 53 Orientals. There's some stamps anyway. I thought that would be a nice Oriental theme. This one here. Now, even though it's smudged a little bit, I, I don't mind. I think it just sort of adds to the genuineness and the vintage feel of it all. That one there, I was super happy with that one. This one here. And this one we've already seen. Okay, 
Okay, so idea number three is to stamp on fabric. Now, these particular ones here, I've actually printed on fabric. What I did, went onto the Graphic Premium website and I looked for black and white images and I found these gorgeous botanical and butterfly images. So again, I thought I would go for the larger Denison label because I kind of feel that that would probably be the most popular one. So we'll do black. It would either be black or watering can that I would do on these ones. So, okay, let's go for these images here. Now I'm finding that if I stamp and then I run my finger around like this, it seems to get a crisper border very very happy with that one so let's go over here now this one I have to be careful on because I'm I think it's only just going to fit okay that's come out a little bit light um, but I'm okay with that. I'm not going to stamp that again. I'm going to try this watering can. So guys, if you hang around to the end of the video as well, I'm going to give some tips on how to clean and look after these stamps because there's a little bit you do need to know, particularly if you're in a hotter climate like we are here in Australia and particularly where I am in West Australia we can get some really hot days that's pretty I like that that one and that is pretty I think I like the black and the watering can and of course you could come in with some script Sorry guys, if you can hear a slight noise in the background, we've actually got a visitor. <laughs> so Mike's catching up with one of his mates. Okay, so I'm going to cut those out and we will see how that looks. So here we are. This is all of them cut out. So we've got this one here. I'm so happy with how these ones have turned out. In fact, I think I'm going to make a bunch of these up and do a listing in my Etsy shop because these are absolutely beautiful <laughs> there we go so there's that one there and the other idea I had with the fabric continuing on is that I've just found just some pretty little patterns here and this would be more in line like with retro sort of gingham you could maybe do it as a cooking I was thinking of sewing so um, let's go with plum We'll stamp this one down here and I think that's I probably should have stamped that a little bit closer so we've got that one there and perhaps if I pull out some of my let's have a look might be a bit big there we go well actually I tell you what would be pretty okay here we go we've got pins so I might go with black on this one could do that one um, or if we tried this time I will maybe we will do sienna color on this one 
Let's see if I can get two. Oh, that printed stamped very nicely, that one. <laughs> I'm concentrating and what I'm doing. It's hard while you're filming. Sometimes it, you'll see here it, it fades a little bit on the edge, but I don't mind that. Um, I, I could get my, my um, misty thing out, but honestly, I, I think it gives it character. All right. So uh, what else have I got here? I've got some scissors. So I'm going to come in with the black this time. Oh, these stamps, they stamp so well. I'm going to do this one. And this one, I might do the tape measure. So, there we go. You can have a lot of fun with that as well. So I'm going to cut those out and you can get an idea of what they look like. And here they are cut out. You can have so much fun, bring out all your fabrics, bring out your favourite stamps and stamp away. So idea number four is to stamp around little miniature. So you could either use stamps that you've already got, like little mini ones. So for example, I have got these little Alice in Wonderland stamps. So you would need something tiny. So again, what I did was I went onto the graphic, the graphics fairy website and I just searched for a few images and I resized them down. Um, if you want to know how to do that I'm quite happy to do a video on that so just let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing something like that because I can certainly put something together for you. So um, this one here again I was sort of going for this size one here which is obviously a very popular size it could probably come around in sienna well any color really but i just think we'll go with sienna so this one here you could um actually use these as gift tags so if you going to a birthday party you could wrap your present and then you could write your little birthday sentiment and then you've got a Merry Christmas so you can do some Merry Christmases again you could use them in your Christmas journals you could use them on your Christmas tags you could wrap presents and use them as labels I mean honestly there are so many things that you could use these for So there's another retro O oh Merry O oh Christmas Joys. So that one was um, olive green. So we might come in with this fern green because I'm curious to see if there is a difference. Or so you could even go around black on that one, but let's go green. There's a slight difference. Yeah, that is a more olive green. Okay, we got Halloween one down here. So we've got Halloween coming up soon. So we can start putting together our Halloween ephemera. Now there's a little boy. You might go the watering can on this one. Okay, and now this one here, I've got some Alice in Wonderland images. 
So I might even go aquamarine on these ones. Because I am collecting for an Alice in Wonderland. Whether When I ever get time to get around to making that. I've got so many other journals in front of that. Okay. So this is on um, coffee dyed paper. No, this is tea dyed paper actually. Very lightly dyed tea paper. And then I've done it in the um, in the oven. So there's slight lines. So that one I didn't quite stamp properly. I think off camera I would use my stamping platform. There we go. I did manage to line that up. Okay, so I think we're going to go black. Now this one... They're all the same size. We could go smaller, but I kind of want to stick to this size label. But you can see the idea. You can play around with any size at all that you want, especially if you're putting images onto a Word document or a publisher document. I mean, you can make them as big or as little as you want. And then we've got a birthday cake down here. So I might do that one. Um, let's do that one as a coffee. Okay. And I've got a second sheet here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp these up as well. And then I'm going to cut these out. And we'll come back and have a look at them. Okay, so I have finished stamping them. And I've cut them all out now. So I had a little to and from stamp. So that would make a fabulous little gift tag. This one here is like a little tea set. So that would be a fun little piece of ephemera. Again, this one here, and these I got off the Graphics Fairy, so you can get these. These are for free. Uh, I just thought that looked cute. And this one here, I just stamped some script ac across it. That's another one there that I just did a fun little design. That one there, very Harry Potterish or <laughs> just decorating. Uh, I did this one a slightly different orientation. There's the mushroom one. That's a camera one another to or from to or from birthday cake so there you go guys so that's another idea of what you can do with your denison labels okay so idea number five when you are doing a themed journal you can create your own unique ephemera so i've already kind of touched on it i did these ones here in step number in idea number four and that was these Alice in Wonderland images here. So I do have these um, Alice in Wonderland stamps. So we can have a little bit of fun with these. And we can maybe play around with a few different sizes as well. So, okay, we've got this one here. Um, now, I'm going to use this lovely... This is very precious, this one, because this is from... Um, my mum's stationery <clears throat> and I think these are the last two sheets that I've got <laughs> so <clears throat> I think I will do um, let's try plum so it stands out a little bit on that paper now I don't know how these stamps will go I think you've got to be careful about not getting ink on the edges actually Let's, let's start with this colour paper first. That one's really lovely and naturally aged. Okay. Right, so that's a nice, nice imprint. I'm happy with how that one's turned out. And if we come over the top... Um, we're probably going to have to do it this sort of orientation. Might try and do that plum as well. This is a great way to get all your stamps out. Oh, I came ac across a little bit off the edge of the page there. Ah, uh, never mind. I'll still cut it out, but I might do another one. This is what I mean. 
get the ink just on the edges and then you end up stamping the edges of the stamp on your page as well. <laughs> All right, let's, let's come up a bit higher. Press for five seconds. There you go. All right, didn't get such a clean stamp there. Still looks all right though. I mean, we can always cover up that little mistake. We can get some um, music and we'll just do that. There we go. All right, so um, I actually, I wouldn't mind trying this one just to see how this ends up turning out. I might use um, the watering can for this one. Okay. All right, now I wanted to come in with, we'll probably have to come in either with this one or how about we try try this one we haven't used this one yet I might come in with the black on this bit darker you, if you press too hard you you don't get that little fine white line there that inside border that one's better it's a bit slightly off center but it's, it still looks all right so I'm gonna finish stamping and then I'm gonna cut them out and I'll come back and show you what we've got okay so this is what we ended up with so we've got these two here this one here is a little bit faded, but I still think that that would be fun to use. You could use that in a bit of collage. That one I probably wouldn't do again because I would use that more as a stamp. But these were fun. And this one. Now that was another stamp that I used because I sort of decided that these Alice in Wonderland set of stamps. These are the Art Deco I think they I'm not sure what brand they are but anyway that's what they were I don't think they're the greatest stamps so but you know you get a decent print out of them so what I did was I switched over to another set of stamps that I've got and they were much better so I think it's down to the stamp that you've got and also I used coffee dyed paper so they give different results this one here, I kind of blurred a little bit, but he's always in such a hurry, I thought <laughs> it kind of looked all right, so I left it. And those were the two other two that I did. Okay. So idea number six that I had was if you have these extra large washies, I thought you could take your paper scraps and you could cover your paper. So I thought I would give this a go as well, because this could be similar to the catalogue pages idea. And we could possibly pick up some nice, um, nice Denison labels out of this. Oh, I can already see one that would be really nice. Alrighty. Okay, so let's try this one. So this is probably the size that we would want to go for actually we'll try this size because that's going to pick up that one very nicely so I'm going to go in with black on this one and pick up this dancing couple okay and then we've got the haunted mansion 
I think that would be a bit of fun. And all right, let's go. I think we'll go a bigger one. In fact, with Denison labels, from what I could see, they actually traditionally this is how they looked. So now there's Paris there. Let's see if we can get that. We might end up doing a smaller. We haven't used a small one, so let's let's go. Oh, there's lots we can pick up on this. This is great washi. <laughs> the only problem is I'm slightly overlapping the borders, but I think we can get around that. And I might try, I might go bigger. I might go bigger. Let's. All right. I think that's enough so we'll cut cut these ones out and then what I'll do is I'll do the same thing I'll stamp that one and I'll stamp that one and I'll show you the result okay so this is the result so this was the first one this was kind of like the newsprint style one so I'll just do a quick whoops do a quick flip flick through of these ones here haunted mansion And I really liked how these ones turned out. I changed the light there. Love the script on that one. I can imagine making um, really pretty tags and, and pockets with these. I think these would look lovely. And this one as well. Now, this one I started to get ideas of what I could, how I could use these little really tiny stamps because I was thinking more along like if we do a nice tag and then we want to put a couple of little tiny labels and there's something about doing this stamped hand stamped Denison label and in particular what I'm noticing with this washi and also like with with the fabric is um there's just this lovely texture about it that would look really interesting and it would make really unique work. I'm really excited to try these out actually. And in fact, I'm thinking, I now that I've got all these Denison labels, I'm thinking I might have to do um, another video on how we can use them. Okay, so another idea I had was to either print or to stamp some numbers, 25 numbers. And you can use these either as like an advent calendar for Christmas, or you could just have them ready to go in your Christ for your Christmas um, December dailies, and you could have the 25 numbers leading up to Christmas. So I've uh, got some Jane Davenport. Um, these are the single watercolor pans, and um, I have mixed up some colors ready to go and I'm going to be using a um now I have only just started getting into watercolor so please don't think I'm an expert or anything like that I'm just a beginner uh but I have got these um Princeton round water brushes and this is a number 12 so um I'm just going to I've got my two water pots here pick up some paint onto my brush these watercolor brushes they're made to load up with water and then just come down and just brush down and it just gives a nice background and then we can stamp over these Um, and make make our numbers so I will just carry on 
and do this and then when I'm finished I will stamp over uh, I'm thinking of using this size stamp I've already checked my my measurements so it should be good so I'll carry on and then when I'm finished I will cut it all out and I'll come back and show you the results I just had to show you how pretty that looks before I cut that all up. Um, and also I was thinking while I was doing it that um, probably important to add as well that um, if you're going to be printing it, um, you would need to use a laser printer because if you use your inkjet printer, when you add the wet watercolour onto it, um, that's going to make your ink run. If you're stamping, you would need to use archival ink because, again, if you use like a distress ink, as soon as you add the watercolour, it's going to react and then it's going to blur all your numbers. Okay, so here they are, all coloured, cut out, stamped, etc. All 25 days. So that's idea number seven is to do a bit of an advent calendar or you could even use it as a December daily. You could put that on each page. So idea number eight is to use the longer Denison label. So I've been using this one here and making some craft storage or craft organization label. So if you've seen my craft room to a video and I'll link it um, in the video if you haven't seen it, um, but I've got um, some Calyx units and the one that's on the floor I've put drawers in there and uh, I often like I kind of know what's in what drawer but sometimes I open up the wrong drawer so I've always been meaning to get around to making some labels so I thought what a great opportunity so I've made up some with wax seals, dyes, binding materials, Perricone, silicon stamps so I'll attach those to the drawers and I will show you how that looks after or through the video but uh, that is idea number eight. So idea number nine is to make some fabric washi tape. So I have actually printed on some fabric or you could stamp some images on some fabric and I have used calico, you could use muslin as well and I've just done some light script stamping as well and then I've gotten the Denison label stamp and I've just stamped across there and this one here I'm playing around with um, I've just used a few different shapes and I'm going to work around this a little bit more I think it would be lots of fun to use different colored stamps and um, I'm sort of being inspired by Tim Holtz's washi tape, fabric washi tape actually here. But um, I think it looks quite cute. And as I say, I think this one I'm going to muck around with a little bit more. So that is idea number nine, make some fabric washi tape. And finally for idea number 10, print on vellum. So well done if you've stayed right through to the end. But this was my idea was if you just got some plain vellum or you could use the heavy heavier tracing paper and you could also so you could stamp your Denison label and then get some of your stamps I've also had a little bit of scrap of this is some Tim Holtz vellum paper here how nice would that so look? you could do some layering on a page so you can start off with your bit of graph paper here you could then add some darker scrapbook paper and another piece of decorative scrapbook paper and then you could add your Denison label there. So another idea is that you could um, do some layering on a page, you could do some journaling here, you could tape this down as a tip in and then you could just add that there, you could just glue that on one side and then how pretty would that look with some writing underneath. So here we have it, this is a collection of all the Denison labels that I have made out of these 10 ideas. I hope it inspires you. Now I would like to talk about the care of the stamps themselves because you know as I say I believe that stamps are an investment and the best way to look after them and get the most mileage out of them. So I'm just going to clear this all away and I'll be back in a tick and I will um, walk through how to actually care for the stamps. Okay so here are my stamps. I've used every stamp except for the lined one but I can easily think of ways that I can use that and I'm sure you could as well with hopefully some ideas I've given you from this video plus your own creativity. 
So I have put the stamps back onto the acetate sheet and as I've mentioned I used archival ink when I did my stamping and I have found that when I do an imprint it seems to take all the ink off the stamp so that when you then use another colour you get like another fresh stamp so what I'm saying is I hope I'm making sense is that it doesn't leave any re residue of the previous colour so um, they're fairly dry when you finish um, stamping now be this being polymer and I hope I'm saying that correctly um, I, I actually asked Bob if I could use archival ink remover and he said definitely not <laughs> So then it got me into asking him a few questions around the care of that. So um, basically when you're finished, if you want to clean them, I mean you could actually just leave them like this, they'd be perfectly fine. But after a while, if you did feel that you wanted to clean them, I've just got some water in a spray bottle. So you could just go across here and then the cloth that I'm using, and I will get myself a chamois cloth. Um, you know the ones that you use to wash your car? This one here is 70% um, polyester and 30% um, polymide. Poly so anyway, there's the label there. That's what that is. So it just sort of does feel very similar to a chamois. But the main thing is, is that if you were to use paper towel or you were to use baby wipes, the roughness of the paper towel could leave fluff and kind of mess up your stamps and the same with the baby wipes the um the lotion that they use in the baby wipes is probably not the best to leave behind on the stamp so you're best just to use water in a spray bottle and then get some sort of a chamois with a smooth surface and just wipe over them and you can see it does take off some some of the ink but as I say you don't have to do this every time you could maybe just do this you, you know like I've had quite a heavy session of using these stamps and I do like to clean my stamps after um, so I'm just going to get in there in between and just take the water off so the other thing to consider as well with these stamps like for example my craft room is actually outside and it's kind of like it's not a shed but it's a room that we built it's like an add-on that we built so there's no insulation and there's no air conditioning and it does get very hot in there definitely do not leave these stamps like if you craft in your garage or you've got like a studio that's in a similar situation as mine bring these inside and keep them at room temperature because they're plastic and they will under extreme heat conditions they will kind of melt and bend so anyway as I say I just want you to know these few things just so you can get as long a life out of your stamps as possible so I'll, I'll do, I will just finish um, I will take the stamps off actually and I'll just dry the acetate underneath and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave them on this sheet and I've got this perspex um, clear perspex envelope and I'm just going to store them in here so that I have got no worry about losing any of these stamps should they fall off they won't but over time they might you know start to lose their stickiness but at the moment they're very very tacky and they're not going anywhere but that's how I'm going to store my stamps when they're not in use and I'm going to keep them inside my office so I hope you guys have enjoyed what this video and the ideas that I've given you on how you can use these Denison labels I'd love to hear your own ideas I'm sure I've just touched the surface of what you can do with these it's a great way to bring out your stamps and have a play I had so much fun doing that so that's all for now guys um, take care and as I say please like subscribe and share this video it helps with my channel it helps with the algorithm and i will be back with another video really soon bye